guys and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. If we could get 400 likes on this episode, that would be bloody amazing. Now enjoy some highlights of the games we've played this month. I'm smiling and that's always a good thing. Things have started to improve. There's still some ways we could uh, need to do some patching up, but I think we're on to something guys. So I'll see you guys in a sec. Frankham's ball, Frankham's in there, Frankham's bloody scored. Wimbledon won, League One, Barnsley nil. George Frankham, brilliant stuff. We get it across the box, he can, there's two players in there and I don't know how they've managed to concede that there, but there you go. Sam Winnell equalises for Barnsley. He had two players mark him and still got the goal. Good finish. Across the box and Smith's in again and, well, two goals in as many minutes and Barnsley now have the lead here. And they are a better side and probably do deserve it at the end of the day though. Find it, can you get a ball in? Goes across. Akinfenwa turns, Akinfenwa shoots and scores. Wimbledon 2, Barnsley 2, the beast with yet another goal. We're giving it a best against a good side. Hell of a crossing and ball whipped in, Nightingale clears, Smith knocks it down, Winnell turns and scores. Diff disappointing there. Uh, we have considered three times at home, but they are Barnsley and we're giving them a good run for their money. There we go guys, Wimbledon 2, Barnsley 3. We gave it a really good shot against a much better team, so well done. Pompey now. Clark's header and yet again we've conceded a goal from a corner. I mean, I don't know how to stop them. Nothing I've found has been able to stop conceding goals from corners. It's a shame because we're playing quite well. Wide, Coenda's ball across and Bennett's in there and it's 2-0 to Portsmouth. Um, we've, yeah, been as good as them in this game, unfortunately, and it's just not happened. There we go, guys. Portsmouth 2, Wimbledon 0. Back to the old ways a little bit there. Couldn't take our chances, unfortunately. Come on, guys. We're looking tight here. How is through and how is scored? Damn it, we've been so good so far and then they just score the first chance and we need to stop that. Can you slip it through? Taylor's through and Taylor has scored. Instant response from Wimbledon. Lyle Taylor, Wimbledon won, Wickham won. Good result. Just go for the cross. Whips it in. Taylor's there, not quite. Reeves picks it up though. Akinfenwa can turn. Akinfenwa can score. Wimbledon 2, Wickham 1. And that will push us right up into the seventh spot. Finds Falkingham. Akinfenwa could get, make a good run here. Taylor's in. Will Taylor shoot? Taylor's scored again. Wimbledon 3, Wickham 1. This is a very, very good performance from us so far and a fantastic result on the cards. Back for Fuller. Will he shoot? Blocked. Akinfenwa, top corner. My God. Wimbledon 4, Wickham Wanderers 1. This has been a superb performance in front of goal from us today. There we go, guys. Wimbledon 4, Wickham 1. Probably one of our best wins of the season. Brilliant stuff. Cross is blocked. And for Frankham now, he's got Fuller back in lots more space this time. Can he find a cross this time? Goes short for Frankham. Frankham's ball in, goes for Reeves. Reeves can turn. Reeves can score. Wimbledon won. Dagenham and Redbridge nil. And we would go seventh with that and into the playoff spots, amazingly. Here we go, guys. Wimbledon won. Dagenham and Redbridge won. Up to sixth, thanks to Ben, Re uh, Josh Reeves. Jake Reeves. All over the top should be cut out by Sweeney. Oh, for the love of God, Sweeney. What the hell was that? with the cross goes all the way out for Falkingham on the edge out for Barcham lovely lovely goal Leighton Orient won Wimbledon won we caught them on the break and just caught them out of the back post Andy Barcham with the equaliser for us brilliant stuff back for Dunn we've got to be so careful with these brilliant crosses and Simpson's done it again we cannot stop them from doing it unfortunately that's the problem Cox's free kick James with the header oh my god it's an own goal Drops it across the box again and Simpson's grabbed himself a hat-trick. I've just, I do not know how to stop those low crosses. We've not been able to do anything about it. Again, ball across, Simpson's in again. The low crosses, I, I cannot stop them. Simpson's grabbed four against us today, all from those similar situations. It's crazy. There we go, Leighton Orient five, Wimbledon one. That seems like an outrageously harsh scoreline given the chances, but unfortunately they scored four times from low crosses and I cannot stop them. Right guys, we're back. So yeah, this time it didn't do a crash dump, which was always lovely. Um, here's how the league is actually looking. We're going to do a question of the day as well while I show you the league. Um, so as you can see, we're up into, we're still in the playoff spots despite that horrific defeat to Leighton Orient. Uh, but yeah, today's question of the day is this. Are there any teams that you really hate playing against on um, FM? And yeah, I used to really hate playing against Stoke on um, FM15 just because they would constantly beat me. Um, I used to have some really weird rundowns with Stoke. It was not a good time for us, unfortunately. Um, but there you go. That was Stoke. Who do you hate playing against on FM? Are there any teams that just seem to be like bogey clubs to you? Uh, if so, do drop them in the comments. And if you do have any ideas for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. Right, so yeah. Things have gone better. That's all I can really say. We've had a bit, you know, we've lost a game, we've lost a couple of games, but we've also won a couple of games. It's all very nice. Um, You know, I figured that we were going to lose eventually Um, because we have sort of sacrificed some of our efficiency away from home. Now, against Portsmouth, we held on for quite a long time, but they were playing a very narrow system and eventually they got us and we switched too late. And against Leighton Orient, as you can tell, we switched too late. We switched to our narrow system later on in that game. And I'm thinking away from home, it might be time for the, the narrower system. And at home, we go for the more expansive Orinoco system. I think that's how it's going to be. And I might start transferring some of the stuff from that other system to make sure it's a really solid away tactic. Something for us to do on the road. Maybe even have two defensive midfielders or something like that. Really mess with it and get a really solid tactic to play away from 
from home. Um, but we did beat Wickham comfortably, and we got a good win over Dagenham and Redbridge, which keeps us in seventh. We're in the playoff spots. The board are happy with me so far. I've signed a new contract that gives me another year, which means my job security is now pretty much safe for now. And I think we're having a good year anyway. So if we could finish around about where we are right now, that would be a really good first season. There's a players that I'm looking at in January as well. Um, I've got a scouting report coming from Wales. I think I might be able to find it, actually. What am I doing? Uh, see if I can find it. Uh, that, that's one of the guys, Loveridge. Uh, let's see. I want to just quickly show you it because I was really, really surprised. Is that it? Yes, it is. This is the one. We got the this scout report came in from Wales. Um, and look at these guys. I mean, Ibu Torre, um, James Loveridge, and Jordan Richardson all came through. And look at some of these potentials. So I've picked up Ibu Torre and James Loveridge. Um, they're going to be on a little bit of money, but they've not cost us much in terms of actually buying them. Like a, a grand here and a grand there. But I think that in January, they could come and really bolster the abilities of this squad. So if you've got any experience with either of these two players, do let me know in the comments because I'll be very curious to hear about it. So we're going to jump straight into the game in a second. But first, I'm going to quickly show you the stats. Akin Femme now has nine goals for us. Lovely stuff. Uh, Lyle Taylor's got seven two, and Elliot is doing reasonably well as well. Uh, it didn't help that in the Pompey game, Lyle Taylor was on international duty, so we didn't really have a decent advance forward either. Falkingham's got himself seven assists now. Uh, man of the match wards, Frankham's doing nicely as well. Pass completion, um, Falkingham's nicely doing well. Uh, Aziz and Beard don't really count in that one. Last five games though, so player of the month, is going to be George Frankham and really does deserve that. He's been great for us so far. Now that we finally got a chance to use him, he is brilliant. Uh, worst player over that period, is probably not going to be that guy. It's probably going to be Ryan Sweeney, actually, who, as you can see, has not had a good time at all. You know, he just made some horrific errors, particularly in the late Orient game. He had a woeful time of it. But there you go. Sometimes that stuff just happens. Right, so let's get into the game. They're playing a narrow system as well, interestingly, but I think we might have a better chance at home actually playing the Orinoco tactic. What I'm tempted to do away from home, particularly against narrow teams, is to play this sort of system. But I just feel like at home... This is where we need to be, but we can always switch it to the other tactic. We've got enough players on the bench to make that work. I'm training Tony Harris as a, a centre mid as well, so we could use his ball winning skills a bit higher at the pitch, because at the moment, he literally cannot play there. It's unfortunate, but we're going to train him because he's only 16, so we've got plenty of time, and that is now his sort of uh, forte, so to speak. So, let's get into things. Robinson's back now, which is great. Kinsella is back. We're getting a few players back from injury as well, which is good. Still a few more to come. John Meads. Very, very much important. I can't wait to get him back. I don't think there's anyone else that's really out. But Meads will be very important for us. He'll give us another option uh, in terms of rotating the squad a little bit. So, I think we've got enough to beat Stevenish. They're beh behind us in the league, admittedly only by two points. So, it's going to be tough for us. But, come on. I, I, we've done well lately. And I see no reason why we can't win this one too. But, if we don't, and it's because... Um, yeah, basically, if we were to lose this one, I would start to think that perhaps it's because of the narrow tactic. And I start to think perhaps when we come up against these teams that play these narrow systems, um, it might be wise to go with our narrow system as well. Instead of trying to outdo them by exploiting the flanks, maybe just try and match them. So, you know, I'll look at the heat maps at some point in this game, maybe about 30 minutes, and see if they are going to be as narrow as I think they are. Because, of course, even though they're a narrow system, there could still be gaps, or they could still spread out wide. I played a very narrow system with Paris FC last year, but we had our centre mid set to run wide with the ball to create a sort of false sense of width. And that could be what they're doing. If you notice, they're actually still using the ball in these wide areas, and their fullbacks are important. So we're just going to have to see what we can come up with. But we're doing well so far. We've got not a lot of possession, admittedly, Unfortunately, the main issue I found uh, against Leighton Orient particularly is low crosses. I do not know how to stop these early low crosses that have that sort of arc. Frankham's ball in. Bartram said it is knocked down, but Falking probably will get to this. Uh, he's one of the best key passing players in the league as well, which is great. Really enjoying his work for us so far. Reeves has lost the ball, though, which is not good. One back, though, by Robinson, which is good, but we might still have a chance of being caught on the break here. Go on, win that. There we go. Barry Fuller does really, really well. It's great to have him back as well, which means Frankham can push further forward now and play in his natural role as a right winger rather than Taylor's across and Taylor scores. Wimbledon won. Steven is nil. We're deadly with the uh, low crosses as well, but they do seem a bit OP this year. So I'm wondering if maybe... Have we got low crosses on already? We do, actually. Um, I'm wondering if maybe adding a low cross uh, tactic to the Orinoco... Uh, not the Orinoco one, the, uh, I don't know, is it Uncle Bulgaria or Wombling Free? I get confused with all my Womble puns. Um, but hey, Fuller does well done this right-hand side. Picks his pass beautifully. Lovely stuff. Perfectly on the edge of the six-yard box. And Taylor's across. And it's those kind of goals that I think he's going to be better at scoring, basically. Bayo's good for the air stuff. And we still score plenty of headers from corners and God knows what. So he's getting his chances at Bayo. And I'm enjoying his work so far. So, 12 minutes gone. We're doing okay. We're not getting a lot of possession, but it seems to be coming back for us a little bit now. They're going to have to open up a little bit to try and come back at us. Uh, that doesn't mean we're going to be able to hang on for a 1-0 win. This doesn't feel like that type of game, unfortunately. Uh, let's just check there. They're looking good for now, but since we're not getting a lot of shots on target, I'm just going to tell them to concentrate. And I'm also just going to quickly take a little gander at the heat map and just see if they are as narrow as they think they are. 
they are, but they're not actually as bad as some teams I've played against. They're keeping the ball a lot in this area, and weirdly in this left-back position. Um, so perhaps, maybe just telling them to exploit the right flank. Actually, we'll just wait for this highlight. I'm thinking maybe, yeah, maybe exploiting the left flank. Sorry, not right flank. Um, our left, their right. Might be not such a bad idea. Because they're obviously trying to keep the ball away from that position. Maybe their left back's a bit... Of, uh, sorry, their right back is a little bit weak. Frankham's done well there and he's been fouled by Oliver Shenton. And he's gone in two feet. He's gone. He is gone. Yes, him. He's channeling the spirit of Vinnie Jones, who, of course, is our assistant, not theirs. Um, so let's see. Um, well, we've got... I don't want to switch to control, though, because counter just seems to work, regardless of the situation, basically. So... Unless you're losing really heavily, there's really no point. We may as well just try and sit this. Um, you know, wins are wins are win. Home games are looking really solid for us, though. That's clearly proving to me that home games are of much... But that being said, I am going to quickly take a little... Actually, one sec. I'm just going to look at their system. Because if they're... Where are we? Uh, where can I see their system? Is that it there? Ooh. I'm just going to stay with what I've got. And just see if they change things. Because they're going to have to change something, aren't they? Right, I just want to see what system they're actually going to play. And then we can start deciding what we're actually going to do. Because look at the space over on this left-hand side. They're really tucked in. Frank them over on the right. Can we get a second goal? That's what we need. And we need it soon. Uh, corners would be nice as well. If we can find out what sort of system they're using, then we should have a better chance of being able to find a way through them in the second half. Robinson's header and it's cleared. Um, Frank could have done, I don't know, anything there and actually tried to get the ball there. Right, so they're playing... <laughs> They're basically playing a plunger uh, as their system, um, or like a jet fighter. So we may as well try and play it wide. Um, just go around these guys, use the wingers, do what we do. Pep. But we cannot afford to lose this game or even draw now because we've got the lead. And, oh, so much space for Taylor. Go on, Taylor. We need a bit more pace of a striker. Taylor's through and he's missed it horribly. Really good opportunity for us to put this game away, really. And these are the chances that come back and bite you if you don't take them. Simple as. And we need to make sure that we do take them. We've not been over, overly brilliant today, but we've still been better than we have against these narrow systems in the past. Admittedly, 10 men now should be uh, fairly comfortable. Frank, we do need a second goal, though. Frankham's ball in. Akin Fenwa this time. Osborne, drop it aside for Kinsella. Osborne, somebody shoot the ball. <laughs> and it's put in the back of the net by Paul Robinson, of all people. It's the baddie from Neighbours. He's put it in the back of the net. And it's Wimbledon 2, Stevenage uh, nil, And that should be game, set, and match. And also, amazingly, would push us up to fourth in the league. Um, this was going to go in eventually. It was like a Sunday league goal mouth scramble. And Robinson's done the duty there. And I might get him off in a minute, actually, because he's on a yellow. And we need to freshen things up. I might just try and get off the two players that are on yellow cards. Reevesy. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Mm, no. We can't take Reeves off because Nightingale's going to have to come on for Robinson. He's just coming back from injury, so it's important that we keep him uh, nice. Barcham could come off for Kennedy, interestingly. But you see, there's a lot of gaps in this team that we really do need to try and fill with some of these signings, which is what I'm trying to do, really. Um, Bayo's not been superb today. Let's get Tom Elliott on and give him a little run out here. We're two goals to the good against Stevenage now, against 10 men. This should be a game in the bag. At home, we are looking dynamic and beautiful and... Uh, Reeves should get to this, but he's taking his time about it. That's fine. Osborne now. Ball out wide for Frankham. He's got a bit of a chance if he can pull this back, maybe. Well, everybody is in the Stevenage half now. We are looking very good for a third goal, potentially. Elliot out wide for Kinsella. Go on, Lewis. Ball across the box. Nightingale not quite there. Kinsella try again. Back for Barcham. Oh, and Taylor's in there. And Taylor's in there. Okay, Lyle, for the love of God. I, <laughs> how many chances like that does he need to put one in the back of the net? It seems like he's un... It seems like he's incapable at really close-range chances because it's often those ones that he's missing. If he's got a chance to run through and there's a bit of space, simple. He puts them away. But with those situations, he's useless. I do not know why. Um, I don't know if there's a PPM for that or something that maybe he's not trained in or, or, or something because I just do not know. Um, let's see. Barcham for Kennedy. Lyle Taylor for... I'm just trying to think who else we could really get off. Stands to, well, Tony Har The thing is, Tony Harris is not yet good enough to play in that position. Um, so we're going to... Gonna go for Callum Kennedy um, on. We should be fine. We've got 2 0 lead and we've dominated this game in the latter stages, obviously, because we've got an extra man. But what I'm saying is, in these sort of situations, it's where you need to put the hammer down and try and get threes and fours and fives because goal differences do count in this one. You know, we're gonna be fifth, uh, sorry, sixth place at this point, and it's still very tight, of course, so a bad run will see us drop all the way down. But I'm still feeling pretty confident about our chances of maybe even sneaking into a playoff spot. If we can sort out our away form, then the playoffs are a definite possibility. If we can start picking up some points on the road, then things will start to look really, really good. But for now, at home, we are looking dynamic and 
frankly, in this game, we were utterly brilliant. Um, Taylor did, of course, score a goal, but I, I think he should have had a couple more, basically. Reeves is superb in this game. Lovely 88% pass completion. But man of the match, Barry Fuller, there you go. Tackles one five, six interceptions, four headers. He's not the best sort of flying wing back, I have to say. But what I would say about him is that he does seem to have uh, well, that being said, he's playing as a fullback rather than a wingback in this system. So he, he does the simple things well, whereas Kinsella's better for the more flamboyant uh, pieces of play. So in the next episode, I'm thinking, someone asked me, they said to me, would you do the Mansfield game as an ex live com and uh, as a live com at some point since you didn't the last one? And I think, you know what? It's a reasonable amount of space. It's the first, uh, not the first game in January. It's a game in the middle of January. We might have the new boys in by then. And that means we could get like five or six games in the way as well. So yeah, I will do the Mansfield game. Plus they're bottom, um, which is surprising because they've fallen quite a long way from when we played them last. But there you go, guys. Um, so if you like this episode and the fact that we're actually finally starting to see some traction, there's only three defeats in quite a long time. One of those was in the cup against Barnsley. Then please do drop a like on this video as we're really starting to motor up this league now. And I'm really starting to enjoy this again. Um, so yeah. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. That would be fantastic. And I will join you guys in the next episode for a game at home to Mansfield Town where hopefully we can continue this run. We've got a few more away games coming up against reasonably decent sides. Um, so, apart from Newport County, who are completely rubbish at the moment, um, which is a shame because I've already had a bit of a soft spot for them. But yeah, so hopefully we can figure out a way to play on the road because I don't want to lose all three of those games. I'm hoping that the narrow system with a tightened up kind of defense is hopefully how we're going to do it. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.